Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we're going through St Kilda's stunning come from behind victory against the Swans. And the Swans enter a little bit of a slump. Um, losing their last two, their last five performances probably haven't been up to the standard they've set all year. Do I think it's worry stations at the moment? Not really. I think that this is probably the best timing for them to have a little bit of a slump. They get to figure things out. They get to work it out six or seven weeks before finals. They're already pretty much guaranteed finals. They just need to win another, I think it's five out of the last seven to guarantee without a shadow of a doubt. Or is it, it might even be, no, it is guaranteed, it is five and then they guarantee um, top two. But I think four or even three wins will get them top two in itself. I think 16 wins will get it. Um, but 17 wins should pretty much guarantee that Essendon or um, Fremantle have to win out to overtake them, which I don't think will occur. I think they might even get away with um, winning two games um, and getting a top two spot given the log jam below them. But anyway, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into this recap. So as you can see here, St Kilda just basically dominated the ball, to be honest, at portions of the game. Um, they probably should have won by, um, it feels like they should have won by more, even though the Swans had 27 scoring shots to 19. So Swans just butchered the, the set shots and everything, um, which, you know, can happen, I guess. But you're going to give credit to uh, St Kilda and the way that they defended. Um, Callum Wilkie, 51 points in the last quarter. He was absolutely immense. And really set them up with 14 marks behind, um, most obviously behind the ball to a certain extent behind the play. Um, but yeah, he just did amazing. Philippu, I thought this was the breakout game that we sort of thought would happen with him. He did spend a little bit of time in the, the VFL, as you can see, but came back in and he looked a lot better in the role that he was given. I need to actually look at um, let's actually look at this. I thought he was a little bit more on ball, but I could be wrong. Um, but this is sort of the role that I expect the likes of Rochelle maybe to even um, pass down to. You can see Philippou, 63% time on ball and, yeah, CBAs, I should say. And, yeah, he just looked a lot better in that role and looked more at home. And th this is the type of Philippou we want to see. A 45 average, he's obviously going to skyrocket up because of that. Let's actually just check Philippou here. What's his uh, average now? 10 games, 52 average. So it will be interesting to see how that goes with him. But um, you may almost be willing to check uh, Philippou out if he does another one of these performances on ball because we haven't really seen him get too much of this time on ball. Obviously, uh, the St Kilda game as well as the uh, Richmond game here. And we look at uh, Philippou here. The St Kilda game, he had a 26 with time on ball and then the... Richmond game, he had a 68. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops, but he'll be probably classified, I would suspect, as a forward next year. Could we see a positional uh, role change with Philippou? So this will be one to definitely monitor because even if he was to go one 100 or something for the rest of the year, um, he is still averaging 105 to three points um, plus 770 divide that by 17 he'd still be priced at 76 and i don't expect him to go 110 from the rest of the year i expect maybe 90 85 80 somewhere around that range and say he goes 80 for the rest of the year that's 523 plus um 80 would be 560 uh 560 points divide that by 17 and you get him priced at 63 i think there is huge potential upside of anywhere between 15 to 20 points. If we see this role change, we've seen it to, with um, Butters and Rosie two or three years ago to a certain extent where they start to get shifted into that midfield role. They look a lot better. So Philippu is definitely on the watch list for off-season 2025 um, sort of uh, positional changes. Steele was amazing after quarter time. But, well, after half time, he was amazing. 72 points. He just basically... Um, commanded what the, the Saints were going to do and was instrumental early on in the quarter for the St. Kilda Saints. Uh, Marshall 106, Sinclair 102. I thought Sinclair evaded the tag pretty, pretty well in the second half with a 67. He got going and yeah, he's definitely one to watch in the next couple weeks in terms of output. Uh, Wayne and Malira 99, he did pretty well as well. 67 in the second half, uh, 28 touches, 6 marks, 1 tackle. Hill, Burns, Henry. Henry, I thought, was really actually impactful, even though he only had 20 touches. I thought he was one of the better guys out there and really, really going to put it up to the Swans. 
And as you see in the second half, another 63. So he really got shut down on the first half. And then the second half, he just got let loose and ended up kicking a goal and having 20 touches, which I thought was pretty impactful. Howard Higgins, Webster, Sharman, Battle, Clark, uh, Woods, I thought was less impactful than what I thought it would be. Sh Butler, show and maker, 49. A little bit annoying that he did nothing basically in the second quarter. Got to 22 in the last to get to a 49, which is all right. Um, still making cash, which is a good thing. Still got a negative break even, which is a good thing. But yeah, one of the rookies that probably slowed down his cash generation a little bit this week, only with a 23 or so K rise, was it? What was it in the end? Um, it was actually 40K. So that was good. Um, yeah, 42K in the end, which was a good thing to see there. But uh, got a seven break even this week. We'll see how that goes with him. He shouldn't probably be making too much cash gen for the next couple of weeks. We expect, um, yeah, that's probably about right. 52 projected at the moment. Um, and he'll make 59, 75K more, which 75K more is still good. Because once you get up to the 400Ks, that's when you can start flipping them well. Um, and then no one else he really fancy relevant. Then we go over to Sydney. Um, Isaac Heaney, a 105. He really tried his hardest to get the Swans uh, back into the game, kicking two goals. Does have a suspension uh, pending at the moment. Tribunal sits at 6.30. Um, we'll see if he gets off on that one. If he doesn't, then we'll definitely see Parker back in the side, I suspect. Uh, but we'll see if he gets off on that charge or not, um, or whether, yeah, I think they have a lot of, I have, I think they have a lot of precedent to go off to say that he'll get off, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Brody Grundy tried his hardest, but I mean, he would have been a better captain than the likes of a Max Gorn by 24 points, but in the end he, yeah, it sucks, but it is what it is. Um, and yeah, 25 points would have been nice to be honest with you. He did a lot of work in the second half after having a 35 point first half, but then again, yeah, just not enough in the end. He just got dominated by Rowan Marshall. They sort of flipped um, scoring patterns in the second half and first half. Grundy with a, uh, here we go, Marshall with a 71 and a 35. And then you look at Grundy with a 35 and a 58. McInerney, always consistent, seems to just put in the work. And yeah, 23 touches, five marks, three tackles, one goal, one from him. Oli Florent, a little bit off, I think, with his disposal efficiency. So was Goulden. Goulden was absolutely pathetic with his disposal efficiency. Um, out of his thir first 13 disposals, seven of them were turnovers, I believe, and four clangers in that. Um, I think he ended up, I don't know exactly how many turnovers he ended up with, but it was pretty poor. Um, let me actually just double check on my phone to see how many he got here. One second, let me scroll down to Errol because he didn't have a good last quarter, but he ended up with eight turnovers in itself and disposal efficiency of 68% doesn't look as bad, but yeah, it was just really poor in the first couple quarters. Um, I don't know whether it will show it. 58% disposal efficiency in the first quarter with six turnovers. Second quarter he had one turnover and then the uh, third quarter he had another but then in the last quarter with a one disposal and that was efficient so yeah just a poor game from him chad warner impactful he's never going to be fantasy relevant i don't think because he's just an impact player much like shea bolton um if shea bolton was just mid only he would be the exact same as chad warner impact players don't make good fantasy players uh mccann's a key back row bottom again much like uh much like Rao, when they're tackle based and they're not really possession based it's hard for them to score points just because tackles are worth four whereas a possession is worth two or three and you're not going to have uh 20 or 30 tackles in there you're going to have uh like 10 or so so it really is hard which is only the equivalent of probably like 15 or so disposal so there really isn't um um there's a mismatch almost in a certain way of tackle to disposal type uh, player characteristics that really limit um, the tackle players. Uh, Rampy Campbell, I thought, had a really good game in his uh, better positioning. It looks like he started more from the half forward rather than the half back, and I think that looked a lot better. So we'll probably see him in the side still. Logan McDonald missed a shot from basically the same place at, well, a similar type of distance, a little bit more... Um, straight on, but it was good to see him actually back himself in to take the shot. Papley was shocking. James Jordan, um, the tagging rules probably subsided a little bit um, in his ability to do it. I'm not, uh, and that sort of sucks a little bit, but it's sort of a form slump, I think, across the whole park for the Swans. McLean, Lloyd was pretty poor. Blakey, this is why you don't pick um, these guys like Blakey or any guys that are sort of just on one or two game highs with Blakey having a one-two-one, one, we saw again he'd he'd stop there. 
Fox, um, Haywood, Amadi, Wicks, Melkin, Roberts with a 37. He just isn't getting going. And then Adams came on for a 31 point, um, yeah, 31 point effort there. So that was all right in a quarter. But I expect to see, I expect to see Parker in this side next week, regardless of Heaney. But if Heaney is out, then that pretty much uh, nails that on. Um, and then also Mills should be back, I suspect, for round 19, I suspect. I'm not 100% sure what's going on with him and the VFL, what week it is exactly that he was supposed to play a half, but we'll see with that. Um, and then there's not really anyone else that could really play, to be honest. But I think it's just a whole uh, Swans team in general are just lacking a little bit of effort and stuff like that. They're lacking um, the, team, uh, the team sort of... B- buy-in that they had earlier in the year and that's the reason why they are playing their greatest but I think they can get that back there's certainly time to fix that before finals but anyway that is the video and I guess I will see you guys in the next one which will be the final recap of the round which will be the Brisbane versus Adelaide game and then you'll see my um my a4 Fantasy team review and then the uh, trade tokes, cash cows and the previews that uh, that those are on the Thursdays or Fridays etc. No upload on the Saturdays we usually do then we get back into the cycle. So that pretty much is the video and I'll see you guys next week. Well tomorrow I guess in a way. I'll see you guys then. Bye guys.